the comments are just <gasps> oh i'll pop some up here oh my goodness i mean look at this guys all right welcome back we're getting there we're getting there okay so this one first of all <laughs> Fill the room with the juice, so that's a lot of loot. This video was posted a year ago. Let me say it again. Because <laughs> I don't know if I even heard, heard, heard myself correctly. This video was posted a year ago. My brain clearly wants to be in 2019. Because no, it's not a year ago. It was 2018. I don't know why I kept saying a year ago. Girl, it's two years. Can you count? So, for everyone that's just thinking of the protests and just how 2020 has been. Again, October 8th, 2018, this was posted. Now, like to dislike ratio, we got 657 likes up, 772 down. So I'm very curious. It's not even at 100K views. The comments are just, I'll pop some up here. Oh my goodness. I mean, look at this, guys. So I, I, I'm sure what we're going to hear will be most likely funny. I, I don't know. I really don't know because, wow. How did we, how did we miss this one? Because I know I missed this one. Okay, hold on, let me pull up my little thingy my jigger. On Friday, President Trump falsely claimed protesters were not motivated by their concerns, but by paychecks from billionaire George Soros instead, quote, Well, that's a very old, tired, anti-Semitic, uh, uh, very, very old anti-Semitic uh, uh, trick that people have, have quote, played, usually on the internet, Mika. The very rude elevator screamers are paid professionals only looking to make senators look bad. Don't fall for it. Also, look at all of the professionally made identical signs paid for by Soros and others. These are not signs made in the basement from love with the hashtag troublemakers. Trump's comments, which was examined and debunked by the Washington Post, came shortly after this exchange on Fox Business with Judiciary Chair Chuck Rasley. Do you believe George Soros is behind all of this, paying these people to get you and your colleagues in elevators or wherever they can get in your face? I tend to believe it. I believe it fits in his uh, attack mode that he has. Uh, Yamiche Alcindor, um, are these protesters paid or what do you make of this? Uh, no, I don't think the protesters are paid by George Soros. But even further, what I want to say is that the Republican Party and a lot of the Republican leadership are really acting like Donald Trump. I've been really taken aback by yeah. by covering President Trump and and all this conversation that people had about about him coming in and maybe being somehow watered down by the Republican leadership and maybe there are adults in the room who will make President Trump act in a different way. And what we've seen it said is that everyone starts acting like President Trump. When Brett Kavanaugh testified, he was talking about the Clinton's revenge. He was talking about the 2016 election. Lindsey Graham is, is using the word slut whore. There's this idea that President Trump has really lowered the decorum in a lot of people's minds of what you can say and really have allowed people to be more raw. And some people like that. There are a lot of Trump supporters who say, we like this brash talk. We like the idea that people aren't being politically correct. But I think long term, there are a lot of people who are questioning, do we want our senators to be saying the word slut whore um, when we talk about the Supreme Court nominees? Do we want people to be talking about political revenge? when we're thinking about the Supreme Court. And also, do we, Mark McKinnon, want uh, the chairman of the Judiciary Committee to uh, pick up uh, an anti-Semitic slur and run with it? Well, Joe, one thing I'll say about the paid protesters line is that the, anybody who said that obviously didn't actually go out to the halls or the grounds of the Capitol and, and see and talk to any of these talk women. So what they're saying uh, by, with this charge is that, yeah, I mean, George Soros paid some people to go out and publicly tell their rape stories. Right or to tell their sexual assault stories. I mean, the, the stories that you'd hear just walking around the halls were so gripping, so so terrifying, so emotional, and, and people were just, you know, spontaneously combusting into tears 
about this trauma from their lives and the notion that they were being paid to do that is, is just outrageous, really. But really, you and John, you, you look at this, you have a, a cable <laughs> news Sickening. Uh, you have uh, frenzy about okay. George Soros. You have the President of the United States tweeting about it. Sickening. You have the Senate Judiciary uh, Leader uh, uh, talking about George Soros and this anti-Semitic conspiracy. Uh, How many it, times are they going to say anti-Semitic? Uh, anti exactly what uh, we, we have a guest coming on at 8.30, uh, a very well-respected man who, who when talking about why he decided to leave the Republican Party this weekend, said they control all three branches of government and yet they still act as if they are victims of some grand conspiracy. Absolutely. And this goes back, I think we're looking at you know, basically a 60 year drama here. And I, and I don't think we can look at it in isolation. And a lot of this conversation, a lot of these tropes, as you identify them, no. come from the early 1950s. They come from the people who joined the John Birch Society, who thought that Dwight Eisenhower was, quote, a dedicated agent of the communist conspiracy. Uh, because you know how some people just make you hungry? Uh, the same people believed uh, had been uh, working with Stalin on behalf of Stalin at the end of the Second World War. Remember, 20 years, 1932 to 1952, the Republicans were out of power. Uh, it, uh, immense anger rose up <clears throat> on the right wing. I mean, now people get this way after eight years. Double that and then add four years. And you, you begin to get some you know, sense of how, of how these things change. The other thing about that period is we think that now, if I had a dime for every time someone said, well, you know, it's cable news, it's the Internet. Well, you know, Fort Sumter was pretty bad. Uh, you know, the, 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 the reaction to Yalta, the reaction to uh, Eisenhower not rolling back the New Deal led to uh, this uh, mainstreaming in many ways of, of conspiracy and that drove uh, politics in the 1950s and 1960s at the same time Eisenhower after that 20-year drought put Earl Warren on the court put Judge Brennan on the court uh, they what did they do 1960 1954 uh, they integrate the schools 1955 they affirmed that with a second decision on all deliberate speed 1962 they banned sectarian school prayer they rule for defendant rights suddenly heading into the nixon era you have a conservative movement that believes that eisenhower had sold them out early on then nixon appoints four justices only one of whom turns out to be a conservative in the mold they wanted a Nixon appointee writes the Roe decision. So you, you, and then George H.W. Bush puts David Souter on the court. Woo! This is a long-term uh, conversation about and, and momentum building about we're never going to be fooled again. It's a it's a Scarlet Hera thing. They're never going to be hungry again. The right is never going to be fooled again. I just wish he had again. more like... And that's what I oh, think Senator Graham, Senator like, McConnell, they're playing off his this, voice this went deep up uh, and down storm there. system that's been it's building so like, for 60 to 70 years. I'm like... Well, coming up, the U.S. Department of Justice will soon own a condo, well, a up, Trump Tower, the US, and yes, a house that. in the Hamptons, all courtesy of Paul Manafort. We'll explain like, that. Engage me, man, please. And Washington Post Ow. columnist vanishes after entering the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. Turkish officials say... He Honestly, I'm going to cut all of this. Saudi because, agents, huh? but Saudi Arabia is calling what? that allegation like, baseless. What? Morning Joe will be right back. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you... Okay. Bye. Interesting. So what do you guys think about that? Because that was in 2018. So that was in 2018, and we're talking about... Actually, what are we talking about? Because we're not talking about Black Lives Matter. So it has to be the people that opposed Trump when he was mad. <laughs> right? Is, it, is that what it is? I think it is. Hold on, let me look. Because <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I said because I can't. I must know. I must know right now. Paid professionals to make him look bad mm -hmm. in service of the Democratic donor. George Soros. Okay, that's what I thought. Interesting. And this was at Capitol Hill. Okay. <laughs> The comments, the comments. I mean, man, you know what I'm saying? Woo! All right, well, next video. I'll see y'all there.
guys like and, and subscribe and you're gonna see the end of this makeup look okay this is why you need to be subscribed because right now i'm like what is this i do not like it at all and honestly i feel like my makeup's too dark for me but all right well the next video i'm really curious to to see so bye no purpose there okay we need it we need we need to be alert Yo. Purpose. 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 Purpose.